Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Fact News Network, and we do have a breaking news that is coming out of the Middle East there. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about the, uh, the, the scientist there that was killed. Uh, the world should thank us for killing prominent Iranian scientist Gloats Israel. That was uh, Fakhrizida, uh, Fakhrizida, Zida. it's kind of hard to say his name, Mohsen Fakhrizida. Uh, the Iranian scientist there that was actually uh, killed by Israel. And it seems to be that that's like an open admission to the death of this scientist. But that's not the breaking news that I wanted to share with you. I don't believe it's being shared anywhere as of, as of right now. Did a little research to see if anybody knows about this. But I got <clears throat> an email in from a fellow uh, journalist out of Israel that says there were reports that Hezbollah had evacuated some of its positions in the Lebanon Valley this usually happens because Hezbollah knows about an attack that is about to take place against Israel. Hezbollah wants to reduce the exposure of its forces in the area and thus reduce the chance of harm to its soldiers. According to the movement of forces, it seems that Hezbollah estimates that the Israeli response that will follow this planned attack will be significant response. It is estimated that the planned attack on Israel is the Iranian response to the assassination of the head of the nuclear program. Of course, as I just mentioned to you, the the uh, the Iranian scientist right there that is pictured on your screen, uh, Fakhrizida, is that scientist, and of course he is the second high-profile uh, figure in the Iranian government, head of the nuclear uh, weapons program, and uh, also we know that it came on the heels of General Soleimani, who was also killed uh, by. Uh, well, people say it was the United States that did it, but we did have the information that Israel was the one that actually carried out that attack, uh, that attack as well, uh, although that it is labeled that Trump gave permission for the attack. We're also hearing that Trump, of course, has been at Camp David now for about a uh, little over a week meeting with his generals. Uh, we've been told that the war with Iran will take place before the end of the year. Now, we can't confirm that that is going to be the case. But we've been told that this is the goal that they're trying to do is to bring Iran down before the end of the year. A lot of things are taking place right now in the Middle East. And of course, an attack on Iran uh, will really cause some major complications. Those of you that have watched our broadcast on Israeli News Live know that over a year ago, back around September of last year, we were sharing with you that when Iran is struck by U.S. and Israeli forces, that Russia was already in on the game plan and that there will be a retaliation that will strike several key cities in the United States as a retaliation measure to help break the nation, the United States. All of these countries working together, uh, not quite what you might think it is. And I have heard some rumoring suspicions that even Iran is working, some of the leaders with Iran working uh, working this out and knowing they're bringing about this one world government. I, I, I can't say that's really the case, but uh, very sinister things that are taking place right now around the world. And, uh, and of course, uh, the Times of Israel reporting amid the threats from Tehran, IDF chief says army will keep fighting Iran in Syria. And uh, as we might know as well today, Russian and Syrian war jets launched heavy strikes second day in a row uh, in the central Syria, targeting, uh, targeting ISIS militants there. Uh, these were the, where they had fled to uh, near closer to the Deir ez Zor region. It's also a stronghold for the, for the ISIS forces down there. And, you know, at one time, the United States considered ISIS bad. But, you know, what do you know? It's kind of interesting to have, if Biden really does go into power. John, uh, uh, not John McCain, but uh, uh, the former Secretary of State uh, will be back in his cabinet once again. Of course, he won't be Secretary of State any longer. But, you know, he was also saying that they were letting ISIS do their thing. They wanted to see Syria fall. This was under Obama's administration. So serious situation that's going on there. Let me let me jump back over here as well. There was an article I tried to pull up earlier, did not pull up for me. And I uh, wanted to share this with you. Uh, it pulled up, and I, and I think Charles, or, or was it Charles, or Strive to Survive, I think, sent me this one here. Iran's National Security Council accuses Mossad and Iranian group of assassinating nuclear scientists. So it is official. They have now said today 
that Israel is the one guilty of that. We see here in the article, Beirut, Lebanon, on Monday, the Secretary of Iranian National Security Council, Al Shamkani, accused the Israeli Mossad of assassinating Iranian nuclear scientist uh, Fakhrizida by using elements of the people's Mahadeen of Iran. So if you remember that name right there that we have right there highlighted in the kind of, I don't know what kind of color that is, but <laughs> kind of like a rust color. Um, this was the very group that was contacted, allegedly contacted by the deep state of the United States to carry out a false flag on one of our uh, assets there in the Middle East to justify that war with Iran. So if Iran, I'm looking at this kind of, trying to summarize what may take place based on the intel we've been getting over the last uh, couple of months here. If Iran responds to Israel in a significant way, as we've seen, Hezbollah is moving their forces out, right? This is what we've seen right here. They're moving their forces away from the Israeli border. If Israel then, of course, uh, after being hit like that, then we might see Israel do a retaliation, but the, uh, the Muhayyadin actually, from what I was told, would not accept the job against American forces there. But the Jordanians, I was told, did. We could see, and of course I've had a secondary intel source say that they are concerned that the target will actually be one of our ships in the Persian Gulf that's entering in. So allegedly to protect the troops that are withdrawing out of there. Uh, that would definitely, a false flag event like that, the world would not know it. They would assume that Israel got hit by Iran as a retaliation for the death of the scientists. Then Israel would retaliate. And then, of course, the United States would get hit. And uh, so everything would just be, you know, a free-for-all in the Middle East which would end up really having some grave consequences for our soldiers over there. I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Fact News Network, also Israeli News Live. Thank you for watching. And also, too, real quick, by the way, those of you, I'd gotten a couple of emails in having trouble uh, to support the ministry via our website, online website uh, app there. Uh, I was able to go in and make some uh, updates uh, on the website. Hopefully that fixed it there. You should be able to just click now and be able to donate online. I will actually go ahead and put a link to that in the description below. Uh, and if you're still having any trouble, if you could just let us know, we really would appreciate that. Also, Charles did send me an updated photo. This was that asteroid turned meteorite because it enters the atmosphere uh, over Japan from four different cams. This is at nighttime. Look how it lit up the sky. And I mean, it looks like a sun almost is so big. Uh, but when you actually see the video footage, it does look more like, like they say in the Japanese news report. It lit up the sky like a full moon at night there. Uh, very, very large. And uh, so and as we shared with you yesterday, several other ones around the world, different countries around the world also coming in. I'm Stephen Benoon. Thank you for uh, listening and good evening.